welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly Stevens. I'm the author of the Tanyuan Academy series, and this is English Nerd. So I feel like I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't really know anything about grammar. I never learned about grammar, and that is a shame, but it's a true, it's true for many people, even people who want to be authors. So if that's you, this video is just to help you learn the grammar that you need in order to be a more successful writer. Now, yes, there are proofreaders. Yes, there are people who can help you out and you should definitely take advantage of all of those resources. But the more self-editing you can do, the more effective you'll be as a writer. You'll be able to write more quickly, more clearly. Sometimes the issue is not just putting a comma somewhere, but it's a lack of clarity. Like, what were you really trying to say? So. A couple years ago, I went to a writing conference and there was a, a, a guy who had worked as an editor for, I think it was Random House for many years, and he said that there were some errors that he saw again and again and again in manuscripts that were sent to him. And so I've looked at that list that he gave during his session and I did sort of an informal poll on Facebook with some people and these were the seven seven of the most common issues that I've seen and that came up in both of those forums. So if you think that grammar is just too big of a of a you know grammar and usage and all of that is too big to tackle, it's not really. Here are seven things that you can learn, concrete things that can help you do your own self editing. So Number one, the one that I probably see the most among my own students is using commas in dialogue. So if you look at these two different examples of dialogue, one has just a period and the other has a comma. If you're just making a statement in dialogue and then adding a tag, a tag is uh, he said, she wrote, they declared, um, then you need a comma separating the dialogue from that tag. So here is what that looks like. I've seen lots of good resources online that give you a little bit more detailed version of how to punctuate dialogue, but at its core, most of the time, what you're going to have is dialogue and a tag, and you have to have a comma separating one from the other. Otherwise, it's incorrect. Now, if you have something like a complete sentence that has an action. Um, for example, what were you thinking? The girl demanded. Sorry. The boy looked genuinely sad about what he had done. The boy looked genuinely sad about what he had done is not a tag because it doesn't have that said or declared or asked uh, piece to it. Instead, it's just a bit of narration. So if you have something like that, you don't need a comma, but otherwise you do need a good piece of punctuation at the end of dialogue. Most of the time when you have a tag attached to some dialogue, you're going to need a comma separating out the tag from the dialogue. Now, if you have an exclamation point or a question mark, then that can work as well. But if it's just going to be a sentence, then a comma is the name of the game. If you have a, not a tag, like he said, she declared, but instead just a bit of narration, like he wrung his hands looking apologetic, or she kicked him under the table, or something like that, then you can have a period and leave it at that. But if you have a tag, you have to have that comma separating the dialogue from the tag. Whew, I feel like that was really hard to come up with an example, which is ridiculous. Okay, number two, when you're writing direct thoughts, use italics. This is true even in first person narration. First person is in the head of the narrator, but if you're going with word by word what the person's actually thinking, you need italics. So if you look at this, for instance, yeah, here's some. So you have some narration and then you have his direct thought, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's not the narrator that is inside uh, Firion's head, word for word. So when you have something like that, don't use quotation marks. I've seen people do that. Quotation marks imply that something's said aloud, but if it's internal, 
then use italics. Number three, use consistent tense. This is not something that uh, people in the poll really admitted to having a problem with so much as what I've seen in practice be a problem for people. There's a big trend toward present tense usage, especially in YA, present tense, first person is really big right now. And so what I see sometimes is when people, especially young people, write, they'll flip-flop between past tense, which is more uh, of a natural storytelling mode, I think, and present tense, which perhaps they've read a lot. So just be intentional. Make sure you're either writing in past or present tense. This is something that can be fixed in editing. In fact, all of these things can be fixed in your own editing pass. You don't need to worry about all these things right off the bat, but I do want you to be able to fix them when you go back over your own work. I mean, this is <laughs> the manuscript that I'm working with now, and there are tons of, tons of issues with it, but that's what editing's for, right? Going back, fixing the errors. So number four, is no vague pronouns. This is another one that I see with my students quite a bit. What I mean is if you have, uh, you know, Furian looked at Bard, he was apologetic. Who is he? Is it Furian? Is it Bard? They're both guys, so which one is the he? Another really common vague pronoun that people use is an indefinite pronoun. So he would be a personal pronoun, he, she, they, etc. An indefinite pronoun would be it, that, someone, that kind of thing. So if you say the, the school was really difficult, biology, algebra, even lunch gave Nick an enormous amount of trouble, it was hard. What's the it? What's the what's the part that's really hard? Is it the, it, was it a particular class? Is it the, the atmosphere? Is it like the bullying? What is the it? So, make sure that you don't have it or that, floating out there, and that's that doesn't have a clear reference back to something. It can be really easy to fall into the trap of these vague pronouns if you know what you're trying to say, but your audience might not necessarily. So this is something to look for. I keep wanting to say in post, <laughs> like this is some movie or something, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll go with it. So check it out in post to make sure that you don't have those vague pronouns, either personal or indefinite as they're called. Okay, next one is keep your modifiers close to what they're modifying. So there are two kinds of modifiers, adjectives and adverbs. So an adjective would be, you know, red, soft, whatever. Um, an adverb would be slowly, etc. Now, adjectives and adverbs can look a variety of different ways, but basically if something is describing something else or describing how something is done, then you want that modifier to be as close as possible to what it's modifying. You don't want to have a noun, like the subject of the sentence over here, and then something that's describing it way on the other side of that sentence. It's just not going to, uh, it could create confusion, let me put it that way. So there are lots of ways that you can write sentences. You can be more poetic, you can arrange in different ways, that's perfectly fine. Why I'm saying that the modifier needs to be close to what it's modifying is that you can run into awkward situations where it's unclear what you're actually talking about. The principal told me today I should finish that project. So is the principal telling you today that you need to finish the project or is the principal telling you you need to finish the project today? So today is either talking about when the principal is talking to you or when the project needs to be done. So you can move around that modifier. This takes a little bit of practice, but if you're looking at a sentence and thinking, this is really confusing and I'm not sure that it's saying what it needs to say, then figure out what's describing what and move the pieces of the sentence around so that what is describing is close to what's being described. That is going to solve some of that awkwardness for you if you just can't put your finger on what it is. Um, of course, you can also start from scratch and just write a new sentence, but 
if there's something that you need to say and it's like a knot that needs to be untangled, that's very often a way that you can untangle that knot. Okay, number six, one more comma rule. The most common answer that I got in the Facebook poll was just commas in general. Now it's true there are lots of different comma rules. I'm only going to talk about two in this list, the ones that I think are the most important for writers. So the first item on this entire list was using commas in dialogue to separate dialogue from tags. And then this one is commas for direct address. So direct address is if I'm directly addressing you. So um, anytime that somebody is being directly addressed, you need to set off uh, that person that's being addressed with a comma. So yes, sir. Sir is the, is the one that you're talking to, and so it'd be yes, comma, sir. I don't think that that's the case, mom. Then I don't think that's the case, comma, mom. Uh, this helps you to not to run into issues that are kind of embarrassing. So let's not wear purple, people. If you're talking to people, then you need to set that off with a comma. Otherwise, you're talking about wearing purple people and that's super awkward and I'm sure not what you intend to say. Um, this one's a really easy rule to follow so just think am I directly addressing this person or is the speaker directly addressing that individual? If so just set that off with commas and you'll be good to go. And then finally number seven is use active voice. If you feel like the flow is not good with your writing, maybe you have a first draft and this paragraph is just kind of dragging, then there's a good chance that you've used a lot of passive voice or a lot of to be verbs, is, was, were, being, been. Instead, what you want to do is flip the sentence around so that the subject of the sentence is doing the action. I have a whole video describing exactly what this means, but it's simpler than it sounds. Instead of saying something like, uh, the main was broken into by Kyria, using kind of a, an example from the book. Uh, the main was broken into by Kyria. That would be passive. That's kind of terrible. The main, which is their like meeting place, is the grammatical subject of the sentence. The main was broken into by Kyria, but the main's not doing anything. It's just being passive. That's where the term comes from. And so instead, you could rearrange the sentence to say, Kyria broke into the main. Now the subject of the sentence, Kyria, is the one doing the thing. So that sounds really like an extreme example because it is. But if you look back at your own writing, it's very possible that there is more passive voice than you expect. And so a way to spot that is, like I said, just look for those to be verbs, is, was, were, etc. The main was broken into that was goes away when you make it into an active sentence. So if you're seeing a lot of those to be verbs, then rearrange the sentences to make your writing more active. I hope that these seven tips are helpful as you are editing your own work. If you have any questions about these things, you can put those down below. But good luck out there. I think that it's really awesome that you are trying to learn enough grammar to become a better writer, so props to you. Don't forget to subscribe for more English Nerdy Goodness, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye!